Hey, what's up, YouTube man? Welcome to another edition of Two Picks. Today we got beef brisket. I'm gonna show you how to trim this brisket in this episode right here. Parts of the brisket and some seasoning. I'm gonna put it on it to prep it, get ready for your smoke. All right, guys. What we have here? This is what you call a packer brisket. Uh, packer brisket is really, you know, a brisket you get from your local grocery store. You know, sometimes it's hard to find briskets up there that are real good in quality. But this is a choice brisket. I got from my local grocery store. Uh, when you select the brisket, you know, you want to select one with, you know, good fat cap on the back right here. Uh, get some good fat, about a quarter inch to a half an inch of fat right here. Um, you don't want really any of this fat missing on the back. Sometimes it's going to, you know, all meat's not perfect, but you're going to have, you know, some meat, some fat missing from different parts. But what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to explain to you some things I look for. I look for some marbling going through this brisket. You know, there's some good marbling. So what that's going to tell me, you know, I can get a lot more flavor and tenderness out of this brisket. And I look kind of like for a uniform red meat line right here. And I don't look for just, you know, a whole bunch of fat right here. I want my flat right here. This is what you call a flat. And this is what you call a point. You know, the point people use for mostly um, burn ends and it's got a more fatty part of the brisket, which is my favorite part. And it's very flavorful. Um, a lot of people like the lean, but when I'm selecting, I don't want it real thin. I want it kind of thick a little bit. That way, I got to do too much trimming. Um, sometimes you got to because it's real thin. I like to, you know, you don't want it burning, so you got to trim off more. So, what I'm going to explain to you is kind of like what I do, and when I prepare my briskets. So, what you want to do is you want to have a sharp knife. I got a right here is what it's called. This is what it's called a paring knife. And I got my big boy right here. This is my big butcher knife. This is this is totally the way to go if you want to get one. But uh, what you want to do right here, I turn it over, put the fat side down, and this is what you call the deckle that's going through here. This is a piece of fat that's not going to render too well in the cooking process. And you know, I like to cook mines at home for an hour and 15 minutes per pound. Um, up to about 190 degrees and you know let it rest about 215 so in doing that I want my fat to render real well so what I'll do first right here but I like the fat uh, she likes the fat but this part <laughs> you know it's not gonna cook too well you know it's pretty hard so I like to trim it a little bit you know watch your fingers just a little bit I like to get it out of there you know this summer it's all briskets are made different you know some of them you won't have this problem some of them have a big piece of meat in it. You know, just kind of pull and take the fat off right there. Like you see this fat, it kind of goes through, so I'm not gonna cut too much, you know, cause I'll be cutting into my meat and you know, we need the meat on there. You know, listen up, I'm gonna show you this when I cut this off. This is about how much I want to cut off. You know, it's kind of thick, so I want to cut that off right there. And a little back part on here in the piece, you know, it looks good, that's a piece of meat. But this is probably going to burn in the process. And it's going to be, uh, you know, hard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that off right there. You know, like I said, some briskets you won't have that problem. Some you will, you know, leave it about like that. Little pieces like this. Cut it up, get it kind of uniform. Little piece right there. Cut that like that. How long is this going to take you? This right here, this is a nine and a half pound brisket so with me trimming it it's gonna probably drop a pound of fat off of it mm -hmm. so it's gonna probably take me at least 10 hours 11 mm -hmm. um, I'm looking for you know really not an internal temperature with my digital th thermometer but I'm also looking for you know I kind of feel on it for consistency I wanted to get in that little gel shape and I'll show you that in part two of this you know this series right here but uh, you know I'm going to say in that there's another piece of fat, and if you was here to fill this, this is very hard on this upside right here. You don't want that at all. So what I like to do, take that, cut, cut that off. And I don't want to cut too much into that no more. You know, you can cut little spare pieces off like this. Don't take too much off, I want the fat. The fat's gonna come from the other side. He's making me look wrong in this. But, I, but I want the fat. <laughs> but I'm trying to tell you guys, this fat right here is not going to cook too well. Yeah. And when she puts it in her mouth, she ain't going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, 
you know, just cut a little bit. I'll leave a little bit on so to help, you know, protect. The fat does protect the meat when it's cooking. So that's why you don't want to cut too much off. You know, and then on this side right here, let me turn it around this side. Like I said, I like to leave about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. So that's looking pretty good right there. That's about a quarter to a half an inch. So I really don't have to worry about that. What I will do is from this part, I kind of cut a little bit. Just a little bit, you know off a little bit. You don't have to cut too much. Take my big knife if I want to. I can really get it. Just a little bit, you know. You gotta do too much. So and that's about you know as much as I can do on that side because this brisket is pretty good. And you know another one more thing you can do as far as trimming. There's some skin on here. This is what you call silver skin. It's like a light blue color right here. Um, you can spend as much time as you want on this if you want to get it off. You know you can take off a little bit, but really you're not hurting the brisket if you decide you know you don't want to deal with it. So I don't play around it too much. You know. I'm kind of a perfectionist sometimes, so I like it to look good, even though it's gonna be cooking. But you know, in the process, I like it to look look good. You know, it's just that's just me. So after you got it trimmed all up, you know, a lot of people they like to, you know, put mustard. This is what right here. I like horseradish mustard. It's something about horseradish. I can't explain. I'm not a scientist, but you know, it's it tenderizes the meat a little more. But uh, you can also use olive oil. Olive oil, what it does, you know, some of the, the seasonings, you know, adhere to the olive oil real good. I couldn't tell you which seasons do it, but I switch it up from time to time. I try different stuff. So what I have right here, I got some horseradish mushrooms, and this is what I'm going to put on today. I'm just going to put this over here, get it out of the way. And what I'm going to do, uh, you know, these fibers and this meat so tight, so. You know, if you want to do it overnight and let it soak, um, you know, there's people that tell you, you know, it's going to, oh, it's going to get more flavor. Um, me, I'm going to put it on, you know, some, most of the barbecue places you go to or competitions, you know, they have, they, they don't get to pre soak their meat and whatever marinade they want to. You know, they usually got to put it on. So that's what I'm going to do today because I am prepping for a competition in October. So I'm trying to, you know, get ready for this thing. So this is what product I'm going to be using. And... You know, just put some mustard on there. You ain't got to put a lot, but uh, what I like to do, you know, I like to, you know, just rub it all in there, get it over. What it's going to do, this mustard is going to give a little, it's going to tenderize, give a little flavor. You know, mustard is always good. Say mustard can be used with anything. Um, it's going to also help your rub stay on your meat. Same as olive oil, it'll help your rub stay on your meat. You know, so it's really no wrong marinade to use. You know, you gotta play around and figure out what you like. So, like I said, I like different stuff. I like to keep people guessing. I don't want all my meats to taste the same every time they come over. I want something new all the time. You know, make it a little more unique. You know, I guess that kind of what sets me apart from a lot of people, you know. I like to try different stuff. But it's always good to have you go to marinade and rub that you want to put on something just to be safe and um, you know, just so you can perfect. So, you know, I don't call myself the best barbecue man in the world. You know, some people will say so, but, <laughs> you know, of course, just your close friends. But, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. So, kind of know what I'm doing as far as this goes right here. So, uh, you know, after you get your, your mustard on, I like it a little like that, rubbed it all in. You know, get your hands washed, just gonna put some rub on, wash my hands a little bit. Got a little rub mixed up right here, and um, most of the time I like to keep it simple. I used to use, you know, kosher salt and mostly coarse black pepper, and I do half and half, you know, one part to one part black pepper, one part salt, black pepper. But today I made a roll a little while back that I really like. I'm um, show you what I did. You know, I change it up all the time, so I don't mind showing you what I do. Um, I got some slap your mama Cajun seasonings. Some paprika, we got a little bit of cayenne, 
some granulated garlic, and some cumin. And I mix that all up in my little shaker right here. Um, I like more, as you can see, you see all that black pepper. That black pepper is really what's going to set this off. And um, salt's going to do it. And all these other spices is going to set off. You don't want anything too fine because it'll become too powered. You don't want to overdo it when you put rub on this because, you know, sometimes you got people eating it and the flavors, you know, it'll probably be too overbearing. So I'm going to show you how I do it. So what I like to do, I like to do a little shake like that, back and forth, back and forth, just like that. Go back. You know, kind of, you kind of pat it in. It's a rub, so I don't like to rub it too much, but pat it in. Go on the sides, put it on the sides right there. And what I'm doing with my hand is kind of keeping it. To go on the side, this kind of bounces off your hand, goes on the side. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And I rub it like that. Put it in between all the little crevices. Then turn it over. And you know, the rub is really not going to go through the back of the fat. So, what I like to do, I like to score it a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, and then I go back with it. And what that's what that to me does is just my, my little philosophy. It allows some of the rub to get in between this fat to go down in and hit this meat. So I'm gonna do it right here the same thing I did to the other side. Shake it up because you know pepper and the salt to separate from each other a little while and salt granules and pepper one's a little heavier than the other and the other leaves the salt I believe that likes to settle to the bottom more than the pepper you know let's go over it shake it up a little bit get that all on there I don't mind putting too much on the fatty side you know, because when, like I said, my wife likes that fat. I love it. And you know, that flavor's gonna come out of there. And if you make them burn ends, oof, it's gonna come out fabulous. So, got it all rubbed up. And next thing you wanna do after you finish all this, you know, the best part is getting ready to put this bad boy on the grill. And in part two, we'll come back. I'll show you how I do all that. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, Two Picks? Welcome to another edition. This is part two of the brisket. I wanted to come outside and kind of show you what I go through and how I prep my smoker. I'm using my old school smoker today. This is kind of like what I, you know, kind of modified. I'm not going to go over what I got in there, what I modified in this episode. I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing. But what I got over here, I got some hickory in this bucket. And uh, it's soaking. Uh, this big piece of hickory has been soaking out here maybe about two hours. And got this nice flame up. This is what I live for barbecue. And uh, when I'm lighting up some hot coals in this chimney, and then over here, up inside the smoking box, you got some coal charcoal. Now, what this method is called, it's called the menu method. And what the menu method is, it allows for a longer smoke, so I won't have to have a lot of maintenance on my charcoals. And I'm just using this to kind of give me some good fire, some good heat. So when I put my wood on there, that's what I'll be cooking with most of the night. Um, what I want to do, you know, explain to you, I'm gonna let these coals right here, I want them to get, you know, kind of gray. And get, you know, ready for the smoke. That way when I pour them over here, it'll kind of keep the coal charcoal along the process to allow them to cook. Sometimes you gotta add some more charcoal, some more hot charcoal in the process. I got a trip pan at the bottom and I got a water pan that's for moisture. And this won't be the only thing I use for moisture, but also, you know, I got some apple juice in a spray bottle. That's uh, what I'll be using when I put this brisket on. When I go in there and get it, I'll show you what I'll be using to mop it. 
So the only thing to do next is let these charcoal get a little hot. Let them turn gray. You can see they starting to turn gray right now. Looking real good. They're lighting up real fast. What I like about Kingsford, you know that flame went out. They're going to be heating up real nice and ready for me to pour that in there. And I'll go here and get this brisket. We're going to let the smoker, once I put that in there, come up to about, I'm going to cook about 250 today. 225 is going to allow me to cook too long, but 250, I'm not going above that. And that's what I'm shooting for today. So I'll go in there and I'll get that and come right back out and show you what I'm doing. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm back out here. I got your brisket. I got my temp up. It's about at 225. I'm going to keep it between 225 and 250. I got me a good little smoke going on. I don't want too much. I want me a nice clean fire, but it, it'll die down in a minute. Just a little bit of smoke. And what I'm going to do right now, what I learned about my smoker, got it nice and hot, is my smoker gets a little hot on this side. Everybody's different, but I got some modifications, so it gets a little more hot on this side. So what that tells me, take this brisket, and I'm going to put this point on the hottest end. Just like that, fat side up. The reason I like fat side up, because cooking this long and slow, and the fat, you know, it's going to render around the meat. Not too much in the meat, but it's going to help it render. Do it hot and fast, and then you'll turn it over on the fat side down and flip it and do it at a higher tip but we do it low and slow and what I do what I like to do I take some apple juice you can use water you can use hot sauce you can do beer anything you want water regular water and I like to hit it a little bit of apple juice because it's gonna have some spices in it it's gonna have this this right here help it get a little sweet taste to it do a little bit right there shoot close it up you know, remember one thing if you look at you ain't cooking let your tips come back up. And what I'll do for the rest of the night, you got to cook this, come back here, make sure my fire is being maintained, make sure my tips are staying right. They're going to fluctuate a little bit, but I want it around 225, 250. And every now and then, maybe every two, three, maybe four hours, I'll come back out here and spray it. And keep checking it like that. And another thing I like to do, um, while this is cooking, I'm inserting a meat thermometer. And I'll come out here and I'll put my meat thermometer in and set my meat thermometer to my desired cooking temp that I wanted to end in. And that'll help me keep it um, looking at it that, it, you know, what temp it, the meat's rising at. Because it's going to hit a stall. And the stall is going to happen between about 150 degrees and in internal meat temperature. And when it hits that stall, you know, a lot of people get scared and it's going to sit there for a while but it's going to hit that stall and once what the meat will do it'll kick in the heat will kick in and that meat will start shrink up and it'll hit past that stall and start going up to 170 then I'll get ready to come out here and you know if I had to wrap it I'll wrap it but I'm shooting for not wrapping this tonight because I want a little crispy bark so we'll come back here in the morning and we'll check this bad boy and get ready to pull it off in the morning get the slice and get eaten and so stay tuned for part three, checking in in the morning to see what this is going to look like. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up guys? We're back. Brisket is done. It's been resting for about two hours. I smoked this bad boy for about 12 hours. Um, I did a little technique. I wrapped it in a towel and put it in my cooler. Um, and rested it, you know, as long as I could. And it's still hot to the touch. So what I'm going to do right now, I'll take this out of the foil. Take a look at this. I like char color. Does not mean it's burnt. That means it's got a lot of flavor in it. As you can see, see that? That's kind of what you're looking for. Let me put it over here. You know, you put this down. Kind of want it to flop. It's, you know, a little, little bit of jiggle like that. So, how I would cut this, if I wanted to cut it, I would cut it either down between the flat and the point 
or I will cut it straight right here then turn the point and then cut it down the middle of the point so I'm gonna give you a good example so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut it right here with a point flat meat Let's take a look at that look at that right there it's a flat it's a point take this point cut it down a little crust at the bottom get the little crust that looks yummy back here you can kind of some people like to take this and make chopped beef um, you can take them and cube them and make you can take this whole point and cube them and make um, burn ends put some sauce on it put it back on the grill and then you know take you a couple slices always cut against the grain so I know where the grain start you know like to do about a quarter inch to a half inch cut just like that take your, your point get your big nice slice off that fat's going to kind of melt away but that's how you want it right there that's my favorite part cut to that crust on the bottom That's what you want right there. You know, that's how it should be. See, see some of the juices coming out. Shouldn't fall on its own. You should pull apart easy. And that's how you do a brisket. Hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe and share and like. Have any questions, post them. Any tips, post them. Until the next episode, thank you. Stay tuned.